All right, we're live. All right, tonight we've got Chris Guthrie here. He is the, are we going to call you the co-founder of, of Amosuite, or how, how, how do we say that? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> co-founder of Amosuite, that works. Co-founder. <laughs> Well, um, as you probably know, we have I have lots of people who have found Amosuite from listening to um, some webinars that I've done. Um, we actually I, we talked about it earlier. I have a web a, a video that has over four thousand views now talking about how to use Amosuite. So that's been a neat process to get that many people. Um, so today, what I'd like to do is is maybe try to figure out a little bit how you use Amosuite um, and some of the products in there that you use. Um, I think probably most of our people are probably pretty interested in, you know, the top 100 analyzer and the product inspector, those two things. But we definitely would love to learn a little bit about the other ones. So just give me a little bit about your background, Chris, like how you got involved and how Amosuite kind of developed and got you to um, where you're at now. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll try and give the shorter version. And the shorter version is I. I wasn't always doing Amazon seller stuff. I was originally doing uh, Amazon affiliate stuff. And so way back in 2009, late 2009, I lost my job and my Amazon affiliate earnings had surpassed my day job. So I said, okay, well, I'm not going to qualify for unemployment and this is, this is going all right. I've been working out on the side for a while. So I'm going to do this full time. And that was you know, almost six years ago now and been doing different stuff ever since. And then about uh, February 2012 is when we released the first version of Amosuite. And then we've kind of added new versions as we've gone along. And then the most recent one uh, in late 2014 and then early 2015 is when we kind of publicly released it. So so that's kind of how, like the how. And then the most recent version where we added in all these features to help you find products to sell on Amazon is based on uh, about a year ago or so now. I started selling on Amazon as well and thought, hey, these are this is – we already have this software that uh, helps with the affiliate side. Let's add some other features in there, and it will help for sellers. And so that's kind of how it how it evolved. Well, that's very cool. That's kind of I think I came in maybe thirteen is when I got my first copy of it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, when, when I because I I originally got it for that purpose more in the affiliate end, and I wasn't very good at that end. By the way, I I, I, it, I probably got to it too late. <laughs> For me. Because that's when all that affiliate stuff, when did, when did that Panda update happen that everybody got crushed in? I think it was like 2011 or 2012. I can't remember exactly because uh, yeah. there's so many now. It's like, because when you, when you say Panda, I think, oh, well, there's also the Penguin, right? And there's also yeah, exactly. <laughs> all these other ones. But was it Panda when it, like the pandemonium happened? Like when like people were making $50,000 a year, the next week they were making none? Yeah, I, I think that was one of the main ones. Uh, there, there have been a lot though. There's always kind of like this calling. Well, yeah, well, they're always coming. Hey, and guess what? Amazon keeps up updating their algorithm. Um, I tell people right now that I don't think people realize it, but on the 15th of July, I think there's going to be Armageddon going on because that's the date when Amazon's going to um, make your listing de uh, depressed if you don't have less than 200 characters in it. So I think there's going to be a bunch of people who aren't going to adjust, and I think they're just going to fall off the floor, and then people are just going to start selling. Because imagine if you have somebody in a category selling $12,000 a week, and all of a sudden they go away because they just didn't get it, you know, and they'll pick it up. But I think it'll, I think it's just going to change stuff on the 15th. I think there's going to be a lot of surprised people waking up with sales, and I think there's going to be a lot of people waking up going, what happened? You know, I don't know how long it'll take them to figure it out, but. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I think I think in a lot of the cases, Amazon sends out emails, but sometimes they don't, or you don't know. <laughs> so it's like, where where are the sales? I, I know somebody. I know somebody who's got emails, and I know people that haven't. So I don't know <laughs> which way it's gonna go. But I yeah. know I know that it's coming, and I know on the fifteenth, people with more than two hundred aren't gonna have a listing that's being put anywhere. You could you can go direct link to it, but you're not getting put in any organic listing. So. Yeah, I mean, the one thing you can count on with any internet business is that there's always going to be a ton of change, and you got to adjust quickly and and rapidly for sure. So, so are you doing? Are, do you still do any affiliate sales at all? Uh, still some, but not a huge amount. I mean, I sold my my top site um, as a product review website for low six figures. I used some investment bankers to help sell that in uh, 2010, I believe. So so long ago now that. Uh, 
I forget which year it is, but it was around the holiday time frame. That's five and, years ago. Yeah, buddy. yeah, it's a long time ago. <laughs> so if you did it at 11, that means you were part of the, 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 the I guess what's the right word? You, your, your, your sites were built on the old platform then before the, before you had to actually have real, real, real site authority. <laughs> it, there's something to be said about that. But at the same time, like I started a site last summer, um, just as a, as a test for a guy that I was hiring, I wanted to hire him part-time and then eventually as full-time and I did hire him as a full-time employee. And so I said, Hey, this is an idea for a site I've had for a while. Uh, you're going to build it under my direction and and then you know we'll see where we're at because he was going to be off and on, on a summer kind of vacation type thing and uh and that site's last month at six thousand dollars and in really? profit so so it's still you can still do it it's just you know and somebody had to work on it every day and put out i mean so is he making all the content and everything for that yeah but i mean he hasn't touched that site in six really? or seven months or so i mean maybe a little bit of work but not very much uh, most of it was kind of early on with the content generation and it was more like a i know that this will work and it's just a matter of that i have too many other things that i'm more focused on and it was a great way to test test him out right right well but it sounds like he passed that test for sure <laughs> yeah it's sort of a random tangent i guess but yeah, yeah. Well, i imagine he just paid for most of his salary in that one <laughs> no, that was the goal. I said, I said, hey, the faster you can start paying for the salary, your salary, the faster I can start giving you raises. <laughs> so let's uh, let's go in and take a look at Amosuite, and you can kind of walk us through how you kind of do. Um, now, a lot of the people that um, that that I work with are um, a lot of newer people, so they're you know they're in the first two product of the product inspector and 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 top 100 analyzer so let's just start there in the top 100 analyzer and you show us the Chris Guthrie inside secret yeah let me head on over to that can you see my screen I'm not seeing your screen yet I'm still seeing you okay um, let me see here I got a black screen nope you're back <laughs> let me see when you press that green button in the left column you should yeah, be able to see yeah, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. I'm trying to remember last time I'd done a screen share through this, and it's a. Uh, is there for me to just share my entire window? Yeah, I think. I think you. If yes, you can share. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I got an idea here, and that should work here. Sorry about that. Here we go. Oh, we're all right. So can you see now? I can see. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, I forgot that. Um, I'm not sure what it is, but there's you know when I select a specific program when I'm using my computer, it doesn't show up. But uh, but anyways, so yeah, so this is the top 100 analyzer. Yeah, I know you're very familiar with the program, but for people that are watching that that aren't, uh, it, it we basically this is designed from the standpoint of. If you have no idea what it is you'd like to sell, this is a good starting point. So that's kind of the way I like to frame the discussion. And so the way I like to do it is, you know, you can you select the site, you can do .com and .co.uk, and there's different data sources you can pick. And so these actually correlate to areas on Amazon, like hot new releases is an, a section you can find on Amazon, movers and shakers, top rated, et cetera, uh, most wished for, most gifted. And these, you can find some ideas in here as well. But what I like to do is just use the best seller's data source. Another thing you can do too is you can select this extract more data option. So what this will do is it actually pulls the other information in at the same time. Um, but I don't really like to do that. I like to just uh, leave that and then do it later. But do you know why I don't do it then? And do you know why I don't? I mean, why I don't do it then is because if I filter out price and reviews before I do that, I get to the answer quicker. Does that make sense? Because I filter out a bunch of stuff that I know isn't in the price category. So. Once I do that initial take, what I do is that then I'll go in and filter price and reviews. You know, I want a product between ten and fifteen dollars, and I want products less than five hundred reviews. Yeah. And then once I do that and I filter that, then I go get more data. Then because, um, you know, it doesn't take as long to get all that data out because I've eliminated a bunch of stuff I don't need. Exactly right. So that's that's very similar to the way that I do it. Um, when I demo, I show kind of a different way, but. Uh, 
So this is given an example, right? So this is an example I've used a lot in, it's in the Amosuite videos that we do for people as well. And it's, uh, let me find, yeah. Uh, it's a barbecue grill brush, right? So let's just get down into these different categories here. Uh, cleaning and maintenance tools. And then these three categories here. So what you're basically doing is you're, you're diving into these subcategories in Amazon, right? Because the top main top level categories is patio, lawn, and garden, for example. That's where there's a lot more competition because those are top 100 products, right? So these are people that oftentimes have had their listings for, for years or they've spent a lot of money to get to that point, right? Through promotion or, or whatever it might be. And so what you're doing with the top one analyzers, you're going into subcategories below the primary category so that you can find products that aren't as competitive. And so then I just kind of run this, and this is just three categories, but you can add you know, as many as you wanted, of course. And so it pulls in all this data uh, very quickly. What about real quick on, so what's the reason, and I always use the uh, select, but when you quick select, what was the difference in, why was that button there if it's just, if it, cause it makes more sense to obviously shop by category cause I can delve down quicker. Was that just maybe, what, what was that purpose? Cause people obviously we don't use it all the time. Yeah, the quick select was something that we had um, earlier because it was just something that, that some people like to be able to just pick a category like patio lawn and gardens and then, but this only gives the first top level. Right, uh, that's what I was category. saying. So you obviously want to go into the manual select so you can get down in there. Exactly, right? Okay, so I was just seeing if there was something I missed in there because I never use it that way and that's what I was asking. Exactly, right. And so these are, this is kind of a thing where, you know, we had this in the original Amosuite version and then two and three. And then it became more clear as Amazon sellers, we don't want to target, at least initially, the super competitive things because there's just too much, you know, competition there. Right. Uh, and so, so this is like the first step, right? Is I go through these different categories and then and the, from here, you know, I need to look at, um, there's a few different ways that you can do it, right? The way I like to do it is, I like to actually pick a lot of categories at once and then just click to get more data and just kind of let it run. So it's one of those things that I'll do maybe while I'm watching TV or some other thing that I don't need to focus as right. much on. And and then, so that's what I'll do, right? Is I'll just click to get more data and then that's what pulls in. And I'm sure you've told people this before, but this is what pulls in the, the main rank so you can see right. what the best seller rank is of that product at this time. And then also pulls in the other information like the weight, um, how it ships, the total number of offers. And then this information just gives you uh, more of a picture about what that product, uh, how that product is being sold and, and whether or not something you'd like to sell. For example, one of the common suggestions people have, which I guess would be another reason why maybe doing the opposite could be a strategy as well. But one of the common suggestions is to go after lighter weight items because they're easier to ship uh, via air as opposed to sea shipping. And so here you can very quickly see, okay, these are lower, uh, lower weight items. This is a little bit heavier. And then, you know, if we're doing things in a very specific category on Amazon, that's related to barbecue grill maintenance. So we're going to most likely just find lower weight items. Uh, but here's one that's, you know, 16 and a half pounds, right? So this is something that, um, if you were to sell something like that, you have to, to keep that in mind. Um, but so let this, you know, you let this run. And you know it's going to show you total number of offers. The and then that will show you. Okay, is this something that a lot of people are selling, or is it something that only one person is selling? Uh, and then additionally, too, you can see the reviews. And so the reviews are a good indicator as well. Come back to so when you say total number of offers, so you're saying that so if that guy's that means there's 17 people listed under that listing. Exactly. <laughs> And so sometimes it'll be, you know, there's two here. So yeah. that might be your listing and or this person's listing and then a warehouse deal for that listing where it was a return. And yeah. so it's listed twice and it's, you know, it's still a private label product. Okay. Uh, and so that comes into play sometimes too. Uh, and even too, like this one here, for example, it might still be private label, but that's when you can just click this and, and check it out. Okay. Uh, and so that's really the bulk of how, you know, I'll use it as all, all, and, and the thing too, that, that I suggest is, and, and this is probably something you do as well is when you first start, uh, once you find a category that you, that you like, whatever it may be, say it's patio, lawn and garden, you kind of want to stay there at least initially 
unless, for example, your product doesn't sell as well as you'd like to, and you'd like to try and branch into something else. But right. I like to plant my flag, so to speak, and then just kind of branch out from there, conquer new territories, I guess, as in that category. And so once you've picked your first category, then this process is a lot easier because then it's just, okay, let me pick every subcategory within that patio lawn and garden area and look at every product. And then you can just have a total overall picture of a big subsection of the products they're selling within that area. And so that's kind of the next, next step I go and I'm looking for new things to sell. And then in those cases, you know, you can look at you know, what are the reviews, the average rating, and then kind of decide a bit more into that. And then of course you can add filters to, to make it easier. So you could do, you know, main rank that's less than 2000 and um, main rank that would be greater than 500, right? Right. So you can do it this way. And I use main rank because, uh, so yeah, this in here. So it'd be like this, and then you can apply it. But the reason why I use uh, main rank is because the rank here is actually the rank within the subcategory. So this that's why we have that in, in that section as well. Just so you know, okay, this is the number one product within a subcategory. And then you come down here further, okay. and, and here's the number one product in the other sub subcategory that you've added. Uh, okay. And so that's kind of how it goes through. And so that's why you'll see as you kind of scroll down until you, oh, you know, if you start filtering right away, you'll you'll see the results will be different. But uh, yeah, you know, if you sort it just by by rank like this, you're gonna find near the top more reviews for a lot of these products because they're the top selling product within their subcategory. So like these three people here probably all have bestseller badges on their on their listings, and those can massively help with conversions as well. Um, on on your weight, because I I mean I know that it's if how does it convert? Just to make sure, I want to make sure that everybody knows how that converts when you're doing a filter on weight. Can you show us? Because if it's six point, it does it break it down by the ounce? Because I know I can put in less than one and it counts pounds. How does it know the difference? So to be honest, for the the weight, that's something that we added like as an additional feature after we originally, you know, pushed it out, right? Some people are like, hey, let's let's add weight. Uh, and so we did that. But for the most part, I don't even ever bother with filtering weight because what I'll do is I'll just filter it by, you know, just doing this. Ah, uh, okay. I'll just click that and then it'll naturally filter. Uh, and then also just saves time for having to actually do it. Okay. And so, yeah, I guess it's a, it's set up in the, you know, once you, if you extract all the data, then it would, then it would show everything. But right. I didn't run the whole thing. But uh, then you have, you know, Okay, here's here's as I go, and actually, Alex looks like the it looks like the filter's not, or the, it's not working correct correctly right now because of the it's showing pound and ounces, but it does that. Is, but I, somehow it figures it out because I, I go check it, and it's odd. Like maybe maybe um, Dave figured it out how to do it. I don't know, but like yeah. it, it it does it goes back and forth. It goes by pounds and ounces. Like it knows. So, yeah, I don't know. And, and so that's, and that, I mean, that's one of those things where it's potentially, we just need to, to add that. Um, it's one of those things where as we've added to this tool and, and, and improved it over time, of course, you know, if we didn't have a weight column then we wouldn't have, you know, right. potential issue in that column, but, but, it's, but in I, general, the data then is helpful for people. So. Hey, listen, I, I think that's <laughs> probably one of the, the biggest benefits is I watched it happen. Cause I was telling some the other day I was doing a walkthrough on another computer. I think I even told you this, I was doing a walkthrough and there was no weight in there. And I'm like, really, I don't even remember it not ever having weight, but so, you know, it didn't have weight in it. So, you know, when you're talking to people about what this, what they should be shipping to me, again, one of the big things is to be able to filter. And if I don't want to have anything over a pound, you know, I mean, it's a great way just to get it quick and get it out of there. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's maybe some good, give feedback I can pass on to Dave as well. Actually, he's, uh, it's kind of funny because we're recording this now, but by the time people start watching it, it might be at a different yes. uh, time, but he's on, he's off camping for a brief time with his family for some, for summer. But then he's told me uh, last time I talked to him on Skype that, uh, he's getting back and he has like a laundry list of things he's gonna be working on. So <laughs> of frame suite. So, uh, so it'll be fun. Okay. 
Okay, great. All right, so we found a product. You went down. So um, when you're looking, so any other things that you look for when you're looking for products? I mean, that's that's a lot of it. I mean, and then the thing I'll look to is you know whether or not something's complementary to what it is, right? So for example, if it's a barbecue grill brush, then what else is there that I could do that has to do with grill cleaning or keeping a grill clean? So like a barbecue grill mat would be a next natural progression. Right. And that's not to say that anyone should use this example because I've used this example of barbecue grill brush and grill mats and all that uh, a bunch. Is, is it your <laughs> fault then that, that there's like 800 million people selling them? Is that what you're saying? There, there's, <laughs> I'm sure there's been an influence because you know thousands of people have, have seen that example. <laughs> and, and I'll tell you what, what do I got? I, I, I've done lemon zesters. Next thing you know, there'll be a boom in lemon zesters. Yeah, I mean the the thing too is that you know I'll, I'll look, I've looked at the you know the original product that I kind of mentioned as an example, and that seller uh, guy, lady, whoever it is, company, they're still number one bestseller. So it's not like I really necessarily hurt them too much. I don't think. If anything, maybe they've they're they're doing even better. So <laughs> one of the things that I've been working with is I look for those complementary products, but I've been bundling them together. So like I've been popping two or three items at the same time, um, but definitely twos I've been doing more, but I'm just right now trying to expand into three, but they're all complementary. So they all can be sold singularly. They can be sold as a three or as a two. Mm -hmm. And you know, they're all, but they're all like $10 products, sales price, $10 products, yeah. you know, 1195, but they're a dollar procurement. But then you can take three of them. That's a $30 product sell it for you know twenty four ninety five nineteen ninety five and you've got your margin up a little bit and so that's the complimentary part that's what I, I I do as well is to you know give yourself and so then you end up with three different kinds of products out of the gate or two so instead of just getting one I look for the complimentary pro product out of the gate and try to do a you know a parent child on it and get a one and a two and what that does is helps me also if I if I push the two my reviews are easier to get because I can do giveaways with the one. Mm. So I mean, so you get reviews, and so then I'm doubling up on reviews, but my one will still be out there, but I still will have the the, the, the two, which is really where I want them to go. It's just because it'll be a much better deal. Exactly, and I think it's hard because you know there's not really a lot of scientific evidence that you can point to when it comes to ranking indicators for Amazon. You can only kind of see what people, some people are saying and then people that figure stuff out, they don't really like to share, obviously. Uh, but yeah, there's, I've noticed that when you add um, child items to a, a total listing, so there's multiple different variants, uh, it just seems like it sells better because maybe people think it's more professional, there's more options. Uh, and so, yeah, if you do a giveaway of your of your single, and then you're still selling a double and a triple or a quadruple, whatever on on that same listing, then you're able to benefit from that review helping the other ones as well. But don't have to give away as many units. So, I, I, and, and you know, and the you know, and if you and the thing is, is is that I can't copy your listing because if exactly. I do a double in there and it's two separate products, there's no way that they can. You can't. You can't because you can't sell that product because you don't have both of them. Yeah, exactly. A great way to what I call a gorilla's uh, a white label, which is just <laughs> together that you can't copy, and now all of a sudden you've got your own private label at that point, or do bundles that of multiples of products. So, yeah, exactly. And then make sure that you know which which one. It's the middle one, right? That's the middle one everybody chooses. The one you want. You give them the best deal in the middle, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's funny the old sales tactics where it's you know show them the like the really low quality one then the really high quality one and then the one in the middle is the the what you wanted to sell them initially but if you leave with that first right. you know it's harder lower close rate or something <laughs> so are you a uh, are you a 97 or an 88 guy a 97 or the last two numbers the cent numbers i am a it depends honestly like i'll just kind of mix it uh 97 is, is fine. Sometimes I do 99. Then sometimes it's 95. Sometimes it's like 62. <laughs> just yeah, to be different. The one I've been here, you know, because I just pay attention. So I just, it, it doesn't matter, I think, at all. But sometimes every now and then. So now I'm, I'm currently on 88s. Yeah. I read some silly article. You know, that's how we all get distracted. Oh, all right. <laughs> you know. 
It yeah, wasn't like I woke up the next morning and there was like three times as many sales. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right. Well, let's take let's take us out to the. So let's. We want to grab one of these and then go into product. Yeah. Sure. I mean, like the biggest thing is you know I just what I'll do is just okay. Let's say I've decided on a barbecue a grill brush as what I want to sell. Then I'll just do some further analysis because the top 100 analyzer will get a lot of products within those subcategories. Um, but then there's still going to be other products that maybe aren't selling within those subcategories or they're in a more competitive subcategory. So they're not in one of those searches, uh, maybe because they're not as, as popular. So maybe they're the 101st product within the most popular subcategory in patio lawn and garden. And anyway, so all this for people listening to this video it might be all this different subcategory and category talk is getting me confusing. All I really need to think about is that there's a primary category, in this case it'd be patio lawn and garden, and then there's just a bunch of different subcategories that Amazon uses to make it easier for people to, to find things. Uh, and then in those subcategories, there's products that are selling well, and that's how they rank them. But uh, So this is what I like to do as the next step, is I, I like to say, okay, I'm interested in selling the barbecue grill brush, so let me put that into this area, I'll exact match, I'll select the category patio lawn and garden, and then I will I'll extract. And this is going to go out and pull in all of the barbecue grill brushes that are using barbecue grill brush in their title. Exactly right. So in this case, there's 221 items. And it's going through and pulling them all out. All right, so one more time. Let me make sure I got it. So it's only – because what else could that be called? I mean, could that be spelled out, barbecue grill? But no one would do that. I'm trying to think what other um, – Okay, so silicone gloves, right? They're mm -hmm. listed as barbecue gloves and silicone gloves. So the so, thing, go ahead. yeah, I, I know where you're going with the question, and, and you know, it's you know, what what about doing both, right? So, or, or whether or not, right? So what you can do is you can just search for one phrase, and then when you're done, just search for the phrase again, and just search search again, and it, it will just fall underneath here. Then. Yeah, and it, those results will be added to the end of this of these results here at the bottom. Okay. And okay. so you can do that and in, in many cases too, every single time, every single case for the most part, there's always one kind of dominant primary mm -hmm. keyword that will describe what's being sold. It, you know, it's rare that there's not one. And if there isn't, you know, that just means you're going to do a few more searches. Well, that's why, um, you know, the only reason I said that is because I was showing somebody in a walkthrough too. And, you know, when I would, when I, there was such a difference between when you search silicone gloves and barbecue gloves. And, and there was a difference, and I was shocked that there was, and that's why I asked that question. Because. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, that's where, when you're doing this, and and we're just doing one example, and the amount of time that we're spending thinking about this product is much less than what we'd want to tell someone to do if they're, right. if they're up and selling, right? Right. Um, because there's, you know, there's a lot more that goes into it than just looking at the numbers. That's a big, big chunk of it, and it's, you know, this drastically helps save you a lot of time. Uh, but then even still, you're going to be looking at the product to see, you know, why it's popular, why it isn't popular, you know, et cetera. And so that's why, you know, I'll use this as, as a second step that basically kind of is more of a catch all, right? Because he's a top one analyzer to be like, okay, I don't know what I want to sell. You're breaking it down to, okay, this is what I'm interested in selling. And then you bring it over to the product inspector, put it in there. And this is like, okay, let me see if there's any other products like this that I missed in my initial search on the top 100 analyzer. Because then you can go through and click every single one of these product IDs and look at the listings to decide you know, more in depth. And you could filter this, of course, too, based on the, on the primary rank. And you can preview it too, right, in an HTML document, correct? Exactly, right. So you can do that with the other options too. And the thing that's funny is that e even though you know, I'm one of the co-creators, not in the sense that I'm touching the code, I'm more of the here are the features that I think that people want to use because I'm doing this myself as well. <laughs> a lot of times it's like there's so many different ways to get to the answer that you know I'm just doing it the way that I've done it for so long and it works and so I'll, I'll do that, right? Whereas I don't, so for example, I don't do a lot of the HTML type reporting and stuff, um, but oh. I do save, you know, I do save files and then come back to them and open them again and look at the results sometimes and, and See, rerun I, them. I stuff. love the preview because I, I'm able to go whip down because I like to see the pictures so I can whip down through them quicker and I know I'm not selling glass. I know I'm not, you know what I mean? I can go and whip down through without having to read. You know, if I'm doing a generalized search and I'm just looking for product and not specific, I pull up the preview 
and then I'm able to look at the actual picture. So I can kind of without having to read all the listings, I can go down and just pick them and go, okay, and click in and go in and look and look further that way. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what is the Facebook link? Uh, that just goes to, uh, I believe it's a Facebook page that Dave set up a while ago. Oh, okay. I mean, I honestly, it's probably something that, um, well, actually, I'll have to look to see uh, if I hover. But yeah, I mean, it's probably something that we could up <laughs> update. Um, I'll have to ask Dave, but. I, I just, I was, you know. Yeah, and he okay. added, I believe, in version in version three. It was, uh, and I'll have to ask him actually to see where, because I haven't looked at, you know, more recently we added a Facebook group after people um, were emailing it to support asking a lot to, to do that. So we added a Facebook group for people. Uh, and then I try and stop in there to answer questions where possible. Uh, it's not super active at the time of this recording, but there's still, you know, a, queer, a pretty big chunk of people in there. And, uh, yeah. But yeah, so I mean, this is what I would do as a second step is, you know, I'd look in here, I'd probably expand this a bit more so I can better more right. quickly see just from that initial right. listing. And when I'm looking, I also, I take all the things that are unnecessary. Like I don't care about the commission. I don't care about the savings and the list process. I, I usually will, you know, show people and when I show them how to just shrink those down and, you know, make them exactly. not, so they don't have to look at them. Exactly. Or, right. Or you can eliminate them. Is that what you're doing? Yeah. So you can right click the category and just delete that row too. By the way, guys, there's a uh, update. I've been just shrinking, you know, just, minimizing them but that's a whole lot easier yeah okay see little things that's why i'm glad you're here looking with, with me yeah okay. and then when you save when you save let's say you save the search like that yeah what file do you save it to pull it back in because i only save i only save the preview ones i save it as the project file okay all right and that way I can just reopen it back up and it's the same. Um, but yeah, you can do multiple different types. And so one of the things I've been doing is, is I've been saving it as, um, as a CSV file, because what I've been doing is adding some, I put that down and I take the product and then I've been adding some other um, figures in there, mm -hmm. you know, so it becomes all one document. So I add, you know, and, and to be able to take those out, that'll help too. So I can, but I just want to have multiple columns. I'm going to look at other things I'm going to evaluate, and I try to come up with my own little score in each product, and that's how we end up finding one, I guess. Yeah, exactly. How? Hey, let me ask you this question. What do you think? Do you go more by at the end of the day? Because, listen, we, we know there's millions of products. I think my opinion is that people get so caught up in this. The bottom line is, is there's just a lot of products on the end for me that, you know, too little, too much but there's a lot in the middle and I think people get so caught up in this decision. What would you say would be the number one thing if you said, look, if, you're, if your brother was going to go in this business, what would you tell him how to find a product? What would be the number one thing you would tell him he should do to find this product? Or I think the biggest thing would be it comes back to the BSR range. I mean, I think that you can run, run that multiple times to see because BSR can fluctuate over time. Uh, but I would say, you know, don't go after something super competitive. Uh, if anything, you know, the, even like a, a product that does say 5,000 a month or something, or even a couple thousand a month, that's still pretty sweet uh, for people, for someone that's coming from the standpoint of not currently making any money at all online. That's exactly what I teach people. I said, quit trying to be millionaires and try to figure out how you can place your car payment first. Yeah. I mean, there's, uh, I think it was the guy that wrote the book Millionaire Fast Lane. I forget his name now, but he, there's like this uh, post in his forum that I stumbled upon that said something like, you know, why are you spending any time looking on the Ferrari website, thinking about the color of the Ferrari <laughs> you'll buy when, you know, when you haven't even started a business yet. Right. And so that's right. kind of another line of thinking too. <laughs> I talk to people about that all the time, and you would not believe how much it does happen, Chris. They, they, they're, they're looking up videos on how to freight forward stuff, and they haven't even opened an Amazon account. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's a really good, an even better, more relevant point is that you really should focus on just whatever the step is in front of you that gets you to the next step, and then you know, at the end of those steps, the goal is a product up and selling, and then getting more sales and more sales and more sales and maybe another product after that. All our, that's what we teach in all our gorilla groups. We all actually share that in there and we call it the magic three. 
and they have to, what they do is is you have to pick the exact next three steps and it's basic and I kind of explain it like this if you're going to your grandmother's or your grandmother's coming to your house for the first time how would you give her directions that's how simple you need to make this well first thing you need to do is open up an Amazon sellers account next you need to open a bank account and then the next thing I you know so it's the next three things that you are gonna do and not get out of line because I tell people if you're if you're working on step 12 I promise step 2 ain't happening and you're never getting to 12 if you continue to work eight steps into the future that's what people causes people so much grief and so much long-termness and getting a product is is they're working on step 12 instead of step three yeah I mean you, you got it dude that's exactly what I tell people too is you, you can't think that far ahead you've just got to do you, you know that the eventual goal is to get your product up and selling at Amazon but there's no point working on stuff that isn't relevant to what you need to do right now especially when you know you have to do that stuff first before you can even get to that right that's the worst part is if you spend all this time looking up freight forwarders but you're you know meanwhile still talking to suppliers and not sure yet on your sample right, right. I want to learn how to write a listing with get a yeah. product so you learn how to write I mean quit watching webinars quit joining quit reading 800 different group pages that's why we started the gorillas um, masterminds because it's 250 people and you can pay attention to these people and I still have to convince people you know because I'll send them notes and say listen we ain't heard from you for a while what are you doing if you want to be in you need to talk because that's why we made them so small so that people could interact and have some accountability instead of trying to read you know posts and 20 million different blogs that doesn't have anything to do with about buying a product yeah, and I mean it comes back to, and I, maybe we're beating it to death, I guess, but I think it's it's still a good uh, point. But it comes back to when you look at uh, when I used to look at forums and people were talking about online business or talking about money they're making, and almost universally, one of the things this guy told me that was really successful, I forget who he, for his name because it's years ago, but it was kind of stuck with me. Was he was like, you know, the people with the highest post count are generally the people making the least amount of money. Because <laughs> uh, they're they're out there talking a lot, but they're not doing a lot. And so you know, and that's different in the sense that you know, if you're if you're someone that's that's running the group, you know, obviously you're going to be doing a lot of posts and all that. Right. But but if 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 you're making a lot of posts and you're not really taking action on your business, and that's you know, that's also a problem, right? Because what you want to do is get to the other side and then help people from a standpoint of you know what you're talking about, right? Rather than I think this is what I heard from someone else who heard right. from someone else or, or whatever. I saw oh, it's another group I, or something. <laughs> I've had some mean people lately just saying mean things to people. Like, and, and I know they're not doing anything huge, but you know, and they're just, you know, taking people down and you have to make those people go away because yeah. it's hard enough to not have people, you know, jabbing at you and, the, and those people. And those are those people you see on every single, you know, every single forum that's out there. Yep, you know it. <laughs> They're groupy forums, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, that's really, I mean, but to kind of bring it all back, I mean, that's really what I do is that's that's kind of the approach is you know I'll look through a bunch of different subcategories within the the primary category I'm interested in selling in. If I don't know yet, then maybe I'll browse it around a little bit more before I, before I do that. And then you know once I pick something this is what I'm thinking about selling. I'll fire up the product inspector and I sometimes do this fairly early on just to kind of get, you know, cause this is going to pull in a bunch of different products. They're all that same thing or something similar enough that it has it in the title. Right. Uh, and that's when I'll do that next. Uh, and then uh, do you want me to show you the other tools briefly at all? Or do you have any other, qu any other things yeah. to talk uh, about? Well, so once you get here, so what this is going to do, basically if you do these searches, right. And the product inspector, you're going to end up with a list, of basically how many competitors you have with a grill mat or grill gloves or whatever it might be. Exactly. So here I know there's, I've searched as many as I can because what I've been doing is, is I've been pulling them and combining them the other way. Yeah. Um, so I like that. That's actually, that's why I love when, when you get to talk to people who do this in different ways because I don't get a lot, I, I, I basically figured it out on my own. You know, I was like, this is affiliate. Well, what if I did this? And there was so much information that helped me and that's why I ended up, hey, that's why we ended up making that video. So yeah, I, mean, I thought it was so awesome. I mean, ultimately we should probably just talk more and then I can create better tutorial <laughs> videos too uh, because there's, you know, there's a way that I do it, but then, but then, you know, even there's a ways Dave does it, and so Dave's tutorial videos might cover different things because uh, he's programmed it uh, than than the videos that I do too. So it's kind of funny in that regard, I guess.
Well, because, yeah, you're right. It's just like, you know, you learn how to drive your motorcycle different than I do. You know, you change the gears different, and that's kind of exactly what's happening, I think, inside of here. Exactly. Right. Show, us, uh, show us the other two programs that come with Nama Suite. Yeah, so I know we're, we're mainly talking about picking products here, but, you know, once you're you're there and you're, you're decided, then this is another tool that can help you. So it's a keyword generator, and what this does is if you've ever gone to Amazon and you started to type in any keyword – uh, it's just like Google. It's it's called search suggest. I think that's the technical term, or that's what Google calls it. And what it does is pulling in these keywords that uh, ultimately Amazon knows lead to sales. Uh, these the keywords that they display in the search suggest uh, would only be keywords that would make sense as keywords that lead to sales because ultimately Amazon's trying to get people to make money, right? They're trying to get you to buy something. And so this, what this tool does is you put in these seed keywords and then it goes through and then does all of these searches with, you know, barbecue A, barbecue B, barbecue C, and then finds all the keywords that are related to that from the search suggest. So rather than going out and manually doing this, you know, you saw here, I just put in three seed keywords, 769 keywords, and it took about less than a minute. And so not all of these, of course, are going to be related to what it is you're selling, but some of them will be and then they give you some ideas you can use in your listing or in the back end area on Seller Central um, where you can put in these extra keywords at. And so you're basically going to go down and you're going to find out all the keywords that now. So then what I didn't, I didn't think about this, but I wonder if you took those in sections and searched them in Google keywords if you get a number of how many searches there were yeah you could you could do that as well I mean that's that's okay, the so one thing that's kind of tough okay how, what was your, what were you pulling out with the I, when you when you right click there and it gave you the Google keyword tool yeah you can do this right there. yeah uh, in this case you know you copy selected keywords for example and then you could do that or copy all keywords. Uh, in some cases, you might not be able to add all of them to the keyword tool, but I, you know, for the most part, I don't do as much of that because this is the challenge, right? Is that no one knows the actual keyword volume for any keyword on Amazon. Uh, there are tools out there that show you data, but that's like a, a proprietary algorithm that they developed based on educated guesses, right? They're combining other data sources to right. come up with those numbers. Uh, it doesn't mean the data is, isn't helpful because it can give you maybe an overall trend that this is more popular than something else. Um, but so I don't spend as much time necessarily looking for keyword volume. Uh, but maybe that's something that I could can improve upon myself too. But you know, I'll use this as like an initial kind of research phase. What's well, those weird things that you get? Because one of the things I do with pay per click is. I mean, and I've never stripped them. I would just strip them right out of Google and drop them in a campaign and then see what odd sales I end up with or what odd clicks I get mm -hmm. and then do campaigns specifically on those words. Exactly, right? And so this is, you know, this is one kind of easy way to get some initial keywords and then uh, I don't know if you want me to show you this one too. Uh-huh. Yeah, so this this tool was based on uh, I, I found this company that was doing, uh, based on looking at their, their number of products they had and the bestseller ranks for their products, um, they had to be doing you know, millions of dollars a year in sales. And one of the strategies that they were using to help get initial sales on their products was to get reviews from top 10,000 reviewers. And so there's a place on Amazon where if you Google it, just top 10,000 reviewers, you can find these people but you had to click through every single reviewer to find out their information. I already ran this ahead of time just so I could yeah. better show you, but you know, you, you can, you know, pull all this information in, you get their email address and, and these people know that, that, you know, you're, you're here to ask them to get reviews, right? That's why their emails even say, you know, reviews by Sean, Ali, Julia, Amazon reviews or Mandy reviews or top review, right? So all these different people, doctor or Dre reviews, all these people, for the most part, are, are looking for these reviews and expecting these people to contact them. And so this tool just makes it a lot easier to figure out if they're the right person to contact to get a review because um, you can pull in, and again, a lot of these people put in their interests. And um, here, I'll put back to the rank. And so you can see in the interest tab, 
you know, what they're interested in. And so what I like to do is I just click the instant search and say it's a photography product, for example. And I'm going to find, okay, here's all these people that, that have photography listed in their interests or it's somewhere else here. Most likely it's going to be the interest right. area. Uh, and so these are the perfect, this is the, the list that I would use to say, hey, I have a product in the photography space. Would you be interested in reviewing it? And in this case, for example, this guy, Bob Tobias, his last 10 reviews were an average score of 3.4, which is pretty low. Right. And so <laughs> for him, he might, might, not, might not be the person we, I want to. We might avoid Bob Tobias. Yeah, we might just skip Bob here. Uh, but we might not skip uh, this person here, right? 4.9, another 4.9, number 4.7. And then the other thing we do too to make it not even uh, easier for you is we also figure out in the last 10 reviews if they've left a, a review or a video review. And so this person here, Andrea, video review, last 10 reviews were five stars. So put two and two together. This is the perfect person to contact. <laughs> say, hey, listen, you want to? Do a free review. Yeah, because some of these people, you know, they're only interested in reviewing specific things because, you know, just like everyone, that everyone has different interests. And so in her case, she's interested in tech gadgets, music, movies, cooking, photography, working out, cord cutting. Let's see here. She has a long profile here. Streaming media. So a lot of different things. But, you know, she might not be interested in something else. And so you're just going to waste your effort contacting people that aren't interested in, in what it is you have to offer. You can sometimes still get these people to, to leave reviews because I don't know what it is, but some of these people just like reviewing tons of products, so they're they're doing that. That's because they like free stuff. Exactly, right? So they like free stuff. And, yeah, and so some people like the free stuff, but others, you know, they only like the free stuff of what they're interested in. And so this way it just makes it really easy because normally you're going to Amazon and you're clicking a reviewer profile and then you're reading their interest column. And then you're looking at their most recent reviews. And then you're looking to see if they've done a video review. And then you're looking for their email address, right? So it's all these different one-by-one -one steps. You just run this tool instead, and it's a lot faster to find that. And if, if you know, obviously, most people aren't going to have an email program. Just copy and put them right in. You can do up to 500 in your Google and make sure that everyone doesn't, you know, you don't send it so everyone can see all the senders. And you can send these out to these people. Exactly right. You could do BCC, or if you wanted to make it look a little more personal, you could just do, and especially if you're only emailing like 20 people or something, Yeah. then you right. can do it like that too. So there's, you know, so many different ways that you can, that you can do. And you can approach. filter on my C2 as well, right? Yeah. And I mean, we have a lot of people using Emma Suite and yeah, I, I constantly get people telling me, Hey, I just got, you know, 20 reviews from using the top review finder and, or the Azon review finder. And it's like, sweet. I'm glad, you know, I'm glad it's working for you. So, I mean, it's, it's just a huge time saver, time saver. A and, huge time saver. Well, cause I get people all the time, you know, and they want to deal with, they want to deal with, you know, review groups and not that that's a horrible thing, but you're just dealing with a different group of people. You're dealing with a lot of freebie seekers in a group like that. Yeah, exactly. Right. And so, so collectively, those are the four tools, though, that, that come with AmSuite. And, um, you know, we're always kind of adding and improving them over time. And we've got multiple people that help with support tickets and all that. Because you know, if I was just me answering all the emails, <laughs> I don't I don't think I'd be alive right now. It's just too many emails. Uh, yeah, so that was quite a while ago, actually. I started help, having people help with emails because it's just, you know, so many emails that we get. But uh, yeah, I don't know if you have any other questions, but that's pretty much a kind of a quick overview of everything and kind of a how I like to use the tools and, and then how here's it kind of ultimately a, here's helps. Here's question on the reviews. So, you know, I hear, you know, because of the way in which the, the, the forums and the groups go, you can see the rumor thing go out with people because those same people that are in all the groups, they'll pick up something they saw somebody say and then put it in every single group. So there's this misinformation thing that goes on, and one of those is is free product giveaways. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I bet you I've read it a hundred times. Oh, Amazon's taking down all the free product giveaways, and and I don't have that opinion because their TOS says I can do it. Yeah, um, I mean, the clearly Amazon has. Yeah, I, I mean, they even have their own Vine program that's specifically for that. Right. Uh, so it's like they're doing it themselves. So you're just bypassing that and contacting people directly. I mean, I mean, ultimately, will will Amazon change 
change it. Maybe they don't allow free reviews to appear. Yeah, maybe. Um, you know, and then in that case, you still might be able to contact those people and you know, give them a promo code to buy it at a dollar, right? And right. then that's what I've been doing a lot too, just to just to add that in there. I get, I think I get better reviews if yeah. I have a dollar in there. Yeah, and the thing too is that you know, a lot of those like the top ten thousand reviewers. That's just a strategy that I recommend in your initial launch. Like the first thirty days, you might send right. out some emails to people. And that's what you do. But then after that, you know, it's like, okay, well, I'm just going to focus on getting organic reviews using, uh, you know, email follow-up like Salesbacker or whatever. Hey, and, well, hey, while you're here, Chris, yeah, can you tell us about that real quick? Because that's a natural thing there. You can give us a quick rundown of that. Yeah, actually, I mean, I could do a brief. Uh, well, I was going to say I could do a brief demo, but maybe, maybe not. But yeah, I mean, basically. Uh, since I, I don't want to keep make it too distracted, but yeah, it's it's basically a tool that that we built. Uh, actually, a different business partner uh, that I'm working with on that. He's based in uh, the U.S. Dave's up in Canada, so I didn't trust him enough to. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah, I give him a hard time, but yeah. So you know, we work together on on this tool, and it um, allows you to send emails after you know to your customers to to say hey here's you know would you be interested in reviewing my product um making sure people got their order fine and so we pre-created campaigns for people based on you know your desired goal of you know getting reviews or just feedback or the combination of both and so you can use those or you can of course write your own and that's where 95 percent of my reviews have come from it's just email follow-up campaigns uh, because those are the customers that are going to give you your long-term reviews or your actual users and you're gonna get the most authentic reviews and also if people are concerned about the rumors and all that those reviews are are, are as legit right. as they could possibly be right because those right. are full price paying customers just leaving a review regular people and often too they're not you know professional reviewers right so that's the that's the one of the primary projects that I work on and so uh, yes yeah, so that's sales backer all right and and that's launched now and, and we're going to talk about that it, we're going to talk about that and share that with people later. So, um, yeah, yeah, and then and there'll be a, a nice extended trial link that you'll be able to give your your folks too, so they can try it out. So, well, Chris, I think that covers pretty much anything. Any last advice for new sellers, people getting into this business? No, actually, here I'll stop the screen sharing here and come back to me too. This year, yeah, I think the biggest thing is just you know. It's kind of a broken record thing, but it's it's probably something you tell people too. Is, is you you can read about and read and see as many sales screenshots of people doing well as you'd like, uh, and that's not going to help you make money, right? Ultimately, you've got to pick something and get going. And so it's it's hard because you know you're you're taking a bit of a leap in starting a business, and that's not something that most people do. You know, most people um, don't do that, and so you just kind of you just got to get after it and, and try it out because what's you know, what, the way you can sh can look at it and really kind of convince yourself to try it is thinking about it from the worst case perspective, right? What's the worst case scenario that could happen? You, know, you, you waste a little time and the product doesn't sell well and you've got to sell it at a lower price to get rid of it, right? That's, you know, right. the most part, worst case. I think that's the number one thing people miss is if you spend a thousand, you're not going to lose a thousand. Like because if you bought your product even close to right, you can crush everybody else's price if you just – don't get any, you just get your money back out of it. Exactly, right? So there's really not, there's not a huge amount of risk in that regard. Uh, and so that's that's the main thing I'd say, I guess, is, is kind of parting words. Well, very good, Chris. Thank you so much for your time. I know you got family and we appreciate you taking a minute out with us. I'm sure the many, many people tell me who, because there are, I get I get requests sometimes that there's a problem, but I can tell you this, the only thing I ever see with Amosuite is, is you know, there's a conflict inside of their system, and I know support. I, I don't ever usually get a second or third email from someone saying they're having a problem. So we appreciate that and the hard work you guys do. People tell me all the time, man, I think this is the great. I did it this morning. I did a walkthrough this morning with somebody, and she had had the program for a week or two. And when I did it, she was actually giggling when she <laughs> saw what I was able to do. With her. Like she That's was awesome. laughing out loud, like, are you kidding me? I can really, you know, and she was just, she had already bought the product. I don't know. And I said, have you ever, have you ever used it yet? No, I have not even opened it up yet. I mean, and she's had it for a week or two. And so today I walked her through the whole product 
and she literally was giggling. So he did a great job, and uh, I appreciate it. And I'm sure there are a bunch of people out there making money because of you being doing it. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. I've I've definitely occasionally I'll notice um, domain names from people that are our, our customers come through, and I'll look up. You know, just I'll see their company name, and I'll because I recognize it from searching on Amazon, and it's like you know they're doing millions of dollars a year, and so it's kind of cool really? that we you know we have customers. Oh, that, are doing, that is yeah. very cool. Very very and, cool. And, you know, so the so naturally for me, I'm trying to get them to come on and you know record an audio interview and give it out to people. Uh, but it's it's always tough sometimes to get those people to want to share because right because they're obviously doing well and they don't want to tell people sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, but we'll see. We'll get more people to talk. That's actually one of the projects I'm working on right now is doing some more interviews with successful Amazon users. So, And Great. if you know anyone, too, feel free to pass them, pass them over. So, well, I, Hey, I know this. I know we got a lot of them coming because we've been doing this. We've been talking about Amazon for about, I mean, I don't think we've done 100 days yet. And I know there's, I mean, I know there's well over 100, maybe 120 people who've um, purchased the product since then that I, you know, worked. So I've probably done in the last month, I've probably done 30, 40 walkthroughs with people. And I'm sure there's another 30 people out there who haven't even got to yet. Who they're, you know what they're doing? They're doing the same thing. They're not getting off their, their hustle and they're just letting it sit out there and they're not using the program. They bought it and don't use it. So buy it and use it guys. Yep. Definitely.